um, 8.15. If you want to turn over to Philippians 2, please. So, this issue of walking in grace. Today, I, I want to, this evening, I want to talk about this issue. And, and th this verse and some other verses like it fascinate me. Because of, of, of what it says. And, and so often, we teach, and, and I'm going to kind of piggyback on what Alex has been talking about with, with the issue of, of the mind. I'm, I'm going to do something probably a lot of us have seen here. Um, but I think it's very important that we, that we get straight how what we're talking about works. It's just not some weird New Age mysticism, but there's some physiological stuff on, on how this works. But, but often we say we walk by grace, not by or we, walk, we walk by grace by faith. We, we walk by faith. We don't walk according to our own flesh. Uh, quit trying to do something. Just, just, just rest in who you are in Christ. Uh, understand who you are in Christ. Live out of that identity. Uh, just, just live out of gratitude. And I agree with all those things. I preach all those things. But this verse fascinates me. Look at verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12, Philippians. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in mine own absence, much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do in his good pleasure. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the evening, the time to come together, fellowship once again. And as we look at the things here about walking in grace, and, and how do we take that, take, take that, take the doctrines and apply them in the details of our life, that we would just, just have a, a heart of understanding, ears to hear and a heart of understanding, Lord. We do thank you for your love and for your grace. In your son's name, amen. Man, we, we say all the time, get your flesh out of the way. And don't do that. And that verse tells you, work it out yourself, guys. Well, it's an interesting verse. It fascinates me that we, we spend all this time, and I, mean, I'm, I do it too, talking about just get your flesh out of the way. Quit trying to work so hard. And he said right here, work it out. Get involved. Do something. And he means it. He's not wrong. Now, the context here, just so we're clear, is not your soul salvation. Okay, I, I, maybe we should start there. He's not telling you work it out, work out your soul salvation. Figure out how to get saved. And the, the, the salvation in, in the, the context is from the disagreements and the backbiting and the vainglory of what he's trying to have there in the church of, of Philippi, right? Specifically, two ladies. And the deliverance is the deliverance from that issue. He's saying, well, work it out, work out that salvation. You guys can do it. Now, the very next verse tells you why they can do it, though. Why you can do it. For it is God which worketh in, in you. you. Where is God working today? We talked about this last night. In you. In you. Okay? God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's right. It's God that works in you both to give you the will to do what it. But you know what? I have a will to do a lot of things that I really like doing. There's some things I think would be a really good idea to go do. Mm -hmm. Let me down a bit. But that one says, you know what? God will also give you the motivation to do it. Love of Christ constraineth us. That word constraineth? One of the definitions of that word constraineth is the power to, uh, what is the definition? The, the, the power sufficient to complete the task. Yeah. Now, we don't think about constraint that way, but the love of Christ is how we can do those, those things. The motivator. Because he's working in us. And, and that's really what I want to look at tonight is this issue of God working in us. Look back at Philippians 1 and verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We just talked about Paul being persuaded of something. He was persuaded and he was confident that God was going to do a work in him for how long? Till the day of Christ. What we call the rapture. What we, the, the term that we call the rapture. Okay? He's going to do it the whole way. Okay? You can put faith in all the way. By the way, does not that tell you that you don't need to worry about losing your salvation if he's going to do the work in you all the way? Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, while we're here, just so we don't have to come back later, get Philippians 2, verse 5. I just want to put this in, and I'm going to say, don't forget this verse in a little bit. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. 
We're talking about a thinking issue, right? Alex, we've been talking about that for, for, for two lessons now. The renewed mind. That renewing of your mind. Look over, if you would, at 2 Corinthians 5. verse 9. He says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Are you accepted? Yes. yes. Okay, so again, this issue, this, the, the verse here we're talking about is our walk. Okay? He's not telling you, well, if, you, if you're just good enough, that, that God will accept you. He's telling you, you are accepted, now walk accordingly. Yeah. Okay? That's the issue here. Anyhow, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done by his body, according to the day it's done, whether it be good or bad. No. 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 It's not by your body. It's in, in your body. What's, what's in your body? Your soul. Your inner man. Okay. We're taught, and that I'm very proud of you people that caught that, so good job. Mm -hmm. Get your little marker, put a little star in it. <laughs> we need to focus on what's going on in us. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, which is for, for saved people only, it's going to be, did the doctrine get built up in you? Right. Because what's Alex talked about earlier, right? What's in you is going to come, or maybe it was Dean, but what, what's in you, your body's going to manifest what's inside a person, right? Yeah. Okay. The issue is, what's going on in you? It's a doctrinal issue where he's talking about here. Did you get built up in, in sound doctrine? Look over at chapter 4 and verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. There's a lot in that verse. Now, I want to focus on the inward man. But, but that will tell you too, this issue of, 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 of healing of the prosperity gospel we talked about earlier today, or what I talked about yesterday, right? If you do really good, God will bless you and put favor on you. Paul says every day, the outward man's perishing. You can go to Romans 8, we're not going to do it. But you can see, we live in, in a day and an age of, of where the, the outer man is perishing every day. Right. But the inner man is renewed what? Day by day. Day by day. Not Sunday by Sunday, not conference by conference, not teacher by teacher, by your own personal Bible study, getting in and understanding the Word of God rightly divided. And we're going to diagram this in a little bit. What I want you to, to, to see, though, though, there's an inner man issue. Because verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, you know, he, he's not minimizing it, he's just in perspective, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hasn't Alex been talking about the last two sessions about put off the, the, in the mind that thinking of the natural man and put on the thinking of the spiritual man? Right. That's what he's talking about here. Seeing a thing the way God sees it. Right? We look at what's going on in, in our lives, and that's temporary. It feels like it's eternal. I get that, but it's not, right? It, it's, it's temporal. And sometimes you have to come to grips with the fact that I have to deal with this. This is going to be part of my life for the rest of my life. And sometimes, you, if, if you can fix a situation, I encourage you to fix it. But the issue is to look at a, way, a thing the way God thinks about it. Okay, the outer man's perishing, but the inward man can be renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. Verse says it is because you're getting in the Word of God right now. Go ahead. So what are we doing? We have that renewed mind now, and now we're starting to look at things the way God looks at them. Eternal. Somebody said one time you've been given the responsibility and the privilege to live in the best personal interest long term for yourself now long term being there eternal you've also been given the responsibility and the privilege to live, to live in the long term interest of others around you yes. eternal what are we talking about we're talking about changing our perspective 
That inward man gets renewed so we can look at things like God looks at things, including the situations that we find ourselves in, which is what we're talking about here, how to walk in grace. So what I want you to see there, in those verses, there's the issue of, of the renewed mind working. Verse 18 is that renewed mind working as we look at things the way that God looks at things. Okay, look over at Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in that. Okay, you got saved. We, uh, uh, grace teachers are, are for, <laughs> it's always been, and probably will always be this way, we always are told that you, you guys say works don't matter. What does that verse say? We got saved. Why? Or good works. We should walk in good works, right? How long? How long ago did God ordain that we should walk in those good works? Your name. Whose workmanship are we? <coughs> Is it our work that does it? <coughs> no, His work. Where's His work happening? In, in, us. in us. See, it's an inner man issue. Mm -hmm. It's an inner man issue. You can. Uh, I'm sorry, but you cannot do good works, complete good works. In your own flesh. Right. You can't do it living under the law. I don't know what I'm pointing at. <laughs> <laughs> the law. Yeah, the law. Now, why are you to <laughs> I do it all the time. You can't. What did I say? <laughs> you can't perform good works. Do the good works that you've been ordained to under the law. Living like you were Israel. Putting yourself under a performance-based acceptance system. Walking according to the prosperity gospel. You can only do it walking by grace. With a renewed thinking in your inner man. Okay? Okay, let's get to it. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. There's three verses that have the same address. We've already looked at one. Philippians 2.13. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2.13. <clears throat> And then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 2.13. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. He says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The word of God works effectually. It will affect the result it's designed to, re to affect. Okay? It will work effectively in you, effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now, many of you have listened to me before, have heard me say this, you're probably tired of hearing me saying it, but here we go. The belief there is not your soul salvation. Right. That's a requirement, okay? you got to be saved for that verse to work. Let me, I will say that. The belief there, though, is do you believe the verse? Now, I believe everybody sitting here, I we can pick any verse in that, in that King James Bible, and so I ask you if you believe that verse, and you'll give testimony, yes, I believe that verse. But when we're out in the nitty-gritty of life, and stuff happens. And we want to respond some way. But the verse tells us something else. Where do we come down? Do we believe the verse that it's going to work like it says it will? Or do we believe that we're right and we have the answer? Because Paul didn't understand my situation because it was 2,000 years ago and they didn't have <laughs> Facebook back then. I know. The word of God works effectually in you that believe. Do you believe the verse? When it's, when it's hard, when your flesh and the circumstances of life and your family and your co-workers and TV and YouTube tells you this is the way to fix it. 
But the verse says, this is yes. the situation. Mm -hmm. What do you believe? That's hard. That's where we live. We talked earlier about a 12-step program, 14-step program. Do you believe you need to do all these things? By the way, that's the law. Yeah. Right. Or do you believe that Jesus took care of that issue? Get rid of the guilt. Understand who you are in Christ. That's not what a member of the church, the body of Christ does. That's not what the mind of Christ leads you to do. Forget the guilt. Deal with the issue. And then get back on being an ambassador of Christ, who you're supposed to be. We get hung up in the guilt. Even if it's like this. Well, I know I shouldn't do it, and I'm not I, and I understand I can't put myself under the law, but I don't want this just and we go on and on, right? Having our little pity party. Mm -hmm. What's the middle letter of the word guilt? I. Look at First Corinthians 2 13. If you're a person that likes biblical numerics, and some people get upset when I talk about it, I think that's one of the things. I think these reverse verses all go together perfectly and they all have the same address, and it's so easy for me to remember that. <laughs> We're going to look at the rest of the passage, but I just want to jump into verse 13, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are given to us of God. No. She's heard me before. <laughs> Don't give up that word freely. Religion takes out that word freely. Religion tells you need to earn those things that God, that Paul tells you have been given to you freely. Mm -hmm. Somebody else dropped that word freely, and it had devastating consequences. Eve yeah. back in the garden. Okay? Don't let anybody take that word freely out of your Bible. All the things that we have are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak? Okay? So those things are freely given to us of God. Those are the things that, that we speak. Now, who's the we? Paul. Yeah. Okay. It's Paul and Sosophanes. Okay? But primarily Paul. Okay? So the things that Paul speaks are the things are how we know what's been freely given to us of God. Now, Paul doesn't speak in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Okay, so how does the Holy Ghost teach? He uses some words, right? Mm -hmm. Which words? Pauline doctrine. In the, in, the, in the context, which words in the Word of God? The words that Paul uses, right? Which we speak. Paul says, we speak, which things also we speak, but we don't use man's wisdom. We use the words that the Holy Ghost teach, uses. So the Holy Ghost is using Paul's words. What's my point? We know the things that are freely given because the Holy Ghost tells us in 13 books that Paul wrote. That's how we get edified today in the, in the dispensation of grace in which we live. Okay. So, I just want to look at, how does this work out? You get, many of you guys have seen this, maybe all of you guys have seen this, but I think it's so important to go through. Alex <laughs> did it in squares yesterday, and it kind of made me twitch, <laughs> because I'm used to doing it in circles or seeing it in circles, and most of you know, oh, oh yeah, here goes Dave in the three circles again. It's not mine, I got it from, well, Richard started, but it's many of us teach it, but it's so important to understand, yeah. this is how you're made up, okay? So let's see how we can do here. You're made up, as we saw yesterday, of a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? Romans 6 calls it a body of sin. Sin. Okay? When you're born, Ephesians 2, we saw, you're dead in your sins. You're, you're, you have this dead spirit. Your spirit can't receive things from the Godhead. By the way, what's your contact with the Godhead? What was what was Peter's contact with the Godhead? Jesus was there. In the flesh. Right? He, yeah. Jesus he was him. there. He yeah. Probably shook his hand at some point. Give him a hug, maybe. Okay? What's your contact with the Godhead? Spiritual. The Holy Spirit. Okay? So we'll keep that in mind. We've been cut off. We're dead. We're cut off. We saw earlier, right? This is our mind. This is our heart, if you will, or this is our, this is you. This is what makes you distinctly you. And the body is saying, well, you know what that is. Okay? Look at Ephesians 2. 
Keep a hand in First Corinthians because we're going back. Ephesians 2, verse 1. You have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we have we all had our conversation in time past, and the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were, before we're saved, before we're regenerated, we are the children of wrath, right? Our body and our soul are linked. We are the natural man. The natural man has, can only be ruled by what the body tells him. Because he's got this dead spirit. Okay? The, the input we see, all you can see is that satanic thing that we just saw there, right? Satan said, Satan doesn't make you sin. He said, of course, for this world that just feeds your flesh. Okay? The unregenerate man, and, and by the way, you can do this if you're saved too, but the un unregenerate person, they don't have any choice, but they just appeal to it. They don't have anything to stop them from doing that except moral, except human, hum, human, <laughs> human morality. Which, what do you think of people that lived 100, what do you think the atheist 100 years ago thinks of human morality today? It's subjective. Right. Yeah. But they would be outraged by what we see today. What do you think it's going to be like in another hundred years? Okay, human morality is, is not a judge because it changes. And even on the planet, things are different, right? In different parts of the world. Okay? So you can't, you can't base anything up. But when before you got saved, that was all you could go by. And you know that. Your body says, well, jump. And your mind comes back, your, your, your heart and your soul, you come back and say, how high do you want me to jump? What do I need to do to make me feel the best? What do I need to make my flesh feel good? And that's the deal. Because I'm good enough, I'm going to make myself live forever. Because I need to be better than the guy next to me. Because what's the problem with death? It's being a death. Judgment. There's a judgment coming, right? And nobody wants that judgment. But if I'm better than the next guy, maybe he'll get the judgment. It'll avoid me. <laughs> Rationalizing. <laughs> Rationalizing. Right? That's Romans 2. Yeah. So all we're talking about there is Romans 2. Okay? And what, what, what's the problem? Well, you do the same things. Maybe it has a different name, different title, but it's still sin. Yeah. It's still rejecting God. It's still not wanting to retain God in your knowledge. So what's a person to do? So you, you get saved. Somebody, somebody that loves you, shares the gospel with you. You believe it. You get sealed. We read that last night in Ephesians 1. You're sealed. Awesome. Now I want to go. I want to quit sin and I want to go live for the Lord. How do you do it? You got to know some things. You got to know some things. Yep. Because when you get saved, you don't know all these wonderful things, right? And the other thing is, we've all heard the story. I, mean, I got saved, and I got, that, that very moment I stopped sinning. For me, I quit sinning two years ago. <laughs> wow, I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so you get saved. What happened in Romans 6 6? You can look. Six, you really six. can look. Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> All what? Trouble. Trouble. It was the lust and it built all. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. When we got saved, we were crucified with Christ. You've heard the, the phrase, the circumcision made without hands? Let me show you what it is. We get crucified with Christ, and that, that link between the body of sin and our, our soul is broken. Our old man's been crucified with him. Yep. Did you feel it? No. 
Does that mean it's not true? No. The word of God works effectually in you that believe. You do you believe that verse or not? You don't have to answer. You can answer to yourself, don't answer to me. When sin feels like it has dominion over you, when sin feels like it's more than you can bear, when you feel like, let's just a little sin, it's just speed. Do you believe that that old man was crucified with Christ so that the body of sin might be destroyed so that you might not serve sin? We kind of like the first part of the verse, and we really like the middle part of the verse. We don't really like the second part of the verse, the third part, because we like to serve sin sometimes, don't we? It makes us feel good. And we don't want to admit that, and I'll, I'll admit it for you all. Okay? But that's what, what, that's what he's talking about here. You're crucial. You're crucial. You no longer have to serve that body of sin. You no longer have to, this is a, this is that emotional connection. You never have to serve your emotions. Those emotions. And by the way, that's where a lot of addiction, a lot of guilt, a lot of a lot of those types of issues come from is being ruled by your emotions. And it, it, it's hard. I understand. We, we, and, and I'm sorry. You can't get too many details about it. So that, that's happened, right? That, that the body of sin has, has been, been cut off from your soul. Are, you, are, you still, are we still in Ephesians? Mm -hmm. Good. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, verse 1. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you have he quickened that were what? Once dead again. in trespasses and sins. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. He's quickened you. He, Christ, has made you alive. You now have a, a spirit that's alive. Mm -hmm. Now guess what? Now there's something God can work with. Right. Okay. Now, you're no longer cut off, are you? The Holy Spirit now, remember we just read the verse, 1 Corinthians 2.13? The Holy Spirit uses words. Where do you get those words? Where are those words? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Wow, that's looking terrible. <laughs> you study the word of God rightly divided. Day by day. day. A continuous intake of the word of God rightly divided. Do not fool yourself into thinking you can step away and it's still going to work. You can't just... Hug you. Oh, man. I love Jesus so much and I love my King James Bible. Just zap me, God. It's not some metaphysical, weird, new agey type of thing. It's very logical the way God has made us to work. What are we talking about here when we read the Word of God, holy, the Word of God rightly divided, and we study it? What are we, what's happening? Spiritual is spiritual. Alex has been talking about it for two lessons now. The renewing of our mind. The verse over in Romans 12, when you read it, you, I want to bring your attention to it, by the renewing of your mind. It doesn't say renewed, right. like it's a done deal. It's a renewing. It's going on every day. It's going on day by day. Consistent intake of the Word of God. Gets in. The Holy Spirit uses those words that Paul wrote. They get into your mind. You think about them. You meditate about them. You pray about them. You study, you find another verse, you compare spiritual to spiritual, you find some other verses, you understand, that, okay, I've, that there are situations in my life that, that, that I need to address some things on, and you, you go and you, you find the Word of God, and you understand, how do those things apply? How, what is, how does God look at the situation I'm finding myself yes. in? Yes. How do I change my thinking, not from what I want to, to be the case, but what does God say about this situation, and I want my mind to be there? And then this is the part we hate more than anything else. You make a decision. We can't blame God. We can't blame Satan. We can't blame anybody. We make a decision. Do we do it our way? Well, Frank Sinatra, hey, do we do what we want to do, the gospel according to Dave? Or do we do what our renewed mind tells us? And the first time it's a little harder than down the road. That's just human nature, so don't be surprised. This is how it works out of us. Again, it's not this mysticism. 
It's the word of God being going into your mind when you think about it and you say, okay, I have this renewed, that my mind is being renewed. I find myself in situations in life. I'm going to rely, I'm going to walk by faith. Yeah. I'm going to rely on my, my the learning of my renewed mind according to that verse right there that I choose to believe in the situations I find myself. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a story. Some of you heard this. Sorry. <laughs> Living in a small house and working from home is not always great <laughs> because there's somebody that can hear me on the phone. <laughs> I had an argument with a guy at work and I was right. <laughs> I was right. No, I mean, I, I, that's not even arrogant. I was right. 100% down the road. People heard about it, called me up. You know, I, I, again, I work from home. The bike was just somewhere else. People kind of say, hey, I'm sorry I had to go through that. You were right. You know, you, you did the right thing. I didn't do the right thing, but you were right in the, in the situation. And all that. Yeah. Thank you. I heard. Hey, well, did you hear that? And she goes, no, but hey, what are you teaching on this week? <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you what I was teaching on that week. This is the only part of the story I remember, by the way. Ephesians 4. Verse 32. <laughs> Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That's the problem with your ministry partner leaving at home when she can hear you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I spent, literally, that was Tuesday, I spent three days, four days, I guess I was teaching on Sunday, looking for the loophole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never thought about blaming anybody. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. <laughs> imagination. It's inspiration or imagination. Uh, but your imagination tries and tries and tries yeah. to defeat uh -huh. the inspiration. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, can I tell you something? Not only did I realize there's no loophole in that verse, but that verse is I needed to be forgiven. Yeah. I needed, as Christ forgave me, now we always think, well, at the cross, yes. He's talking about in the, in the, in the quarrel. Mm -hmm. Christ forgave me in the quarrel. As such, I should forgive that guy. Yeah. For two years, I told that story at least once every three months. Mm -hmm. It's been a couple of years since it happened. I don't remember the guy. I don't remember the situation. I remember the verse. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I had to change my thinking. Mm -hmm. That's a mess. I don't know. It, it works. It works. It does. Does it apply to And now, when I, you know what? When I believed that verse, when I actually said, okay, I'm going to apply that verse, the situation was gone. I was no longer bitter. Now it's a good, funny story for me to get a laugh or two out when I tell it, as an example. But that's the, that's the ridiculousness of what we go through, too. I wanted to hang on to that bitterness, and I wanted to hang on to that guilt, and I wanted people that didn't even know the story to know how right I was. I just told you I was right. <laughs> You see our mind? You, yeah. you said our mind will lie to us, is deceitful, those deceitful lusts. Okay. The renewed mind will tell you that renewed mind would have kept April from having to come in and say, Dave, what are you teaching on? I would have just handled the situation a little bit different, hung up the phone, and moved on. Not gotten all upset, all high and mighty about how awesome I was. Because it didn't matter. It's not, the verse doesn't say that there's no loophole in that verse. It doesn't say don't forgive him if you're not if you are right. It doesn't say don't forgive him if he's not a bozo. Come on. It just says forgive him. No loopholes. That's what a renewed mind looks like. Christ forgave us. Yeah. So the good point. How did Christ forgive us? Completely. Completely. Bozo. Unconditionally. Bozo and all. <laughs> He's, yeah. he, he's not up there. I forgave you, but one more time. You know, like I told Peter, only seven times 70. Totally, I'm totally out of context. It's a joke. Don't, don't, don't say it. Anyhow. The renewed mind. The Word of God taken in daily. More, do it more than once a day. I'm not trying to limit you. 
But that's how the mind gets renewed. So that you can come and you can look at the verse and you can apply grace that you received mm -hmm. to the situation in which you find yourself. Because actually the problem in my little story there happened long before the issue of forgiveness was ever needed to be done. It should have been handled in the, in, in the situation. So that the issue of forgiveness never even, never even happened. And sometimes that's not right. Sometimes you get harmed, right? And there's nothing you do about it. Right. Okay. But sometimes you can avoid the situation too. When we come to the Bible, so often we want to say, yeah, but. Or we always want the Bible to be about the other guy. That, your Bible, it's about you, it's about Christ, but it's talking to you. Yes. It's not talking to the other person, it's talking to you. Mm -hmm. It's like how often we, we come together and we talk about things, and what do we do? I want to talk about that third person that's not part of the story. <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day about that, and I said, I don't know about that other person. They're not here, but I can talk to you about what you're going through. And we can see how you are handling things. Mm -hmm. And see if, well, yeah, but that, that person's not here. If you want, get them on the phone. We'll talk to them. Go on. Come on, go. What we're talking about? Renewed mind. Apply to the situations of life where we find ourselves. And again, not the gospel of day, but that renewed mind. Apply. And again, I say again, it's a decision that we make to believe the word of God rightly divided in the situation in which we find ourselves or to do it the way that we think it ought to be done. And that's what I was saying yesterday. We need to be careful and on guard that we don't take our thinking and go find the verse. Right. We need to find the verse and change our thinking. Exactly. Okay. Now can I tell you if your Bible sits and, and, and grabs dust for six months and you say, oh, you know what? I remember that guy at the conference. He said something. Let me go find a verse that applies to this situation. It's not going to work just cold turkey like that, for lack of a better term. Because the inner man's renewed what? Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. Because what, 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 what we're, what we're to, to walk pleasing to God, to, th those good works should come naturally. And they don't in our flesh, do they? No. They only come, naturally is probably a poor word, but they only come by walking after the Spirit. To mind. Right? They only come with that renewed mind. Mm -hmm. But their mind's got to be renewed day by day. Paul, what did Paul tell Timothy when, when, when the church was going sideways? Be instant in season and out of season. When it's popular, when it's not popular. How do you apply that to yourself? Hey, when I don't want to know what the Word of God says, I, that's when I need to probably search it out the most. Mm -hmm. When things are easy, it's easy, isn't it? But when it's hard, do you believe the verses or not? Now, can you believe a verse you don't know about? No. So how do you find out about those verses? you got to read them. The Holy Spirit can only, I'm not limiting the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit can only work in you through a reservoir of verses. Because if you have nothing in there, they can't tap into anything. There's a verse, husbands love your wives and be not bitter. Okay. If you don't know that verse and, and you just drive around, you can, now, I don't know about this firsthand, but I've been told, some husbands <laughs> can get bitter. <laughs> and we all love our wives, that's the automatic. But that verse, be not bitter. What are you doing? You're letting go of this stuff. Probably, as a guy, you're probably hung up on stuff you ought not be hung up on anyhow. Well, you need to go and talk. No, just don't be there. She's probably going to save you from yourself. Just love her and don't be there. Wives, submit unto your husbands. You know that verse does not say husbands make your wives submit? Sorry. That's the way we are you. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak for yourself. <laughs> Be not bitter. <laughs> That's an issue for wives to figure out how to do that in their marriage. I told the story about my grandmother many times. My grandmother was undoubtedly the spiritual head of her family all the way until her death. So she had to figure out how to make that verse work in her life. Because if she just lay down and said, okay, 
Frank doesn't want to go to church. Frank doesn't want it. Then none of us would probably be saved. I wouldn't be here. And you guys have something better to do than that. But she figured out how to apply that verse in her situation. Not every situation is the same. My 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 children are here today. One's been married seven seven years. Yeah. And and Natalie's married about seven months, four months, six months, whatever. You know, they might make a decision in their life completely in the will of God that would be different than what April and I would make after 33 years of marriage just because there's some differences there. I understand <clears throat> April a little better than maybe they understand their spouses. Right? The Word of God is not this... The will of God in a situation is not a static thing that applies to everybody. You know, there was a time when that was true, though. There's 635 or 653... Rule laws in the Old Testament that would tell a, a Jewish person every situation, even if they found an uh, animal in a ditch on a Saturday, tell them how to handle it. Take the renewed mind in the situation you find yourself in, believe what the verse says, and then you apply that in the circumstances of your life. In obedience, we talked about that earlier, uh, bring every thought into the obedience the captivity. What's the verse? Captivity, captivity of the obedience of Christ. To the obedience. To the obedience of Christ. We, that, we read that verse as if bring every thought captive to Christ. What's to the, make it. What's the reference? It's 2 Corinthians 10 5. 2 Corinthians 10 5. See, this is what happens when you get off the notes. Casting out imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We read that verse and bring it into captivity every thought to Christ. It's to the obedience of Christ. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Not the faith of Christ. What was the obedience of Christ? To the cross. Right. To the Father's will. To the written word of God. And of course, he was the word of God, right? Bring every thought into obedience to what? To his obedience. To his obedience. Which is... Your renewed mind when you believe the verse. Understanding the great what, how grace works in us through that renewed mind. That, that's the issue. Walking in grace, it all starts with this renewed mind, which is renewed day by day. Understanding when you got saved, that body of sin was separated as the control mechanism for you. I know it doesn't feel that way some days. But it doesn't change the fact that the verse is true. People talk about, well, you have a position in who you are in Christ, that's positional. Yes, that's true, but it's also real. Yes, you have a position in, in, in Christ, but it's real. Okay? Your, positionally, that old man's been cut off. You still have it. We've been talking about that all weekend. You just know experience, experientially, right? You still got that old man in you. Okay? But the fact remains. You, that, 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 that line that was, set, that was between your, your, your soul and your body has been separated, yep. crucified with him on that cross. That you might not serve sin. You have to serve sin if that's not a tru truism in your life. Which means you're not Saved, right? Mm -hmm. When you got because when you got saved, you were crucified with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the case. Now you can you can get a new input, but you need to have a renewed mind. The whole thing with Corinthians, the first few chapters of Corinthians, is he, he's talking to saved people and he's saying, "Don't be, don't don't live like a natural man, because you're not." And if he tells them not to live like that. That means they could live like that even though they're saved, right? Mm-hmm, right. Look at Ephesians 4. And just so you know, there's 613 laws. <coughs> Lynn, Lynn wanted you to know. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 613. 613. Okay, good to know. Kind of like, that's one is 213. Wow, look at that. There's a commentator on that. <laughs> There's a commentator on YouTube that thinks he can keep all 613. And while we may agree with him politically, I feel for the man's soul. 
I saw him in a Catholic. I'm going to now, here I go. <laughs> ben Shapiro, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> ben Shapiro is an Orthodox Jew. And he's really hard. He says, he, he told the guy, I believe I can keep them all so that I can go to heaven. And he didn't want to go to heaven, but so I, so I, I can live forever. There's a video out there, you can find it, of him and a Catholic priest sitting down to talk about salvation. I said, well, let me get some popcorn and adult beverage because this is going to be fun. And neither one of them knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything against this guy. Literally. Anyhow, verse 17. This I say there. Now, First of all, this book's written to the Ephesians, who we I kind of think, right, these were these were mature saints. We, we find out these great doctrines here. By the way, the Ephesian church is one of them, that when Paul says, all those in Asia have left me, he's talking about this group right here. Okay? But at this point, he's talking to saved people. He's writing in the letter. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Why did we write that to the Ephesians? Because they were doing it. He said, right. stop it. Stop doing that. Did it make, would it make any sense to write that to the Ephesians if they weren't doing that? Right, no. If you, the, the book starts, by the way, he wrote it to the, to the saints and, and the faithful. The saints and the faithful. I have a big discussion about is that two people. I kind of take that to be two people. There was a group of people that were saved, and there were some very faithful saints. And the people that were saved, not, this would not be the faithful group. I, I, I kind of think he's saying, guys, you can't, you can't walk that way. Because he's going to tell them, right? put off the old man. Put off this thinking. Put on the new man. By the way, what's the new man? Look at that. Look at that verse. Uh, you're in verse, we're in verse 22. That you put off concerning the former, the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Yep. And the little story I told about myself, was it fairly easy to find the corrupt, deceitful lust, old man? Yeah, vanity. It really was, wasn't it? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and truly hol true holiness. Corrupt, deceitful lust. Not words you want to say about yourself, right? What's going on over here? The fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> True holiness. Yeah. Righteousness. I love that word, too. He doesn't just say holiness, does he? <laughs> True holiness. It makes me think of that thing in Philippians where he says, I don't want the righteousness which is of the law, but the righteousness which is of God, right? Yeah. I want the true righteousness. I don't want my, I don't want my holy acting. By acting, I mean acting. I want the true holiness that can only be found when I apply that renewed mind to the situation where I find myself and I don't live like the other Gentiles live. In the vanity of their minds. In the vanity of their minds. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what I want you to take away, we're, we're, we're done here, what I want you to take away is when we talk about who you are, who you are in Christ and, and we're having this renewed mind and, and how does the Word of God work effectually in you? It's not some new age metaphysical. What was the book we saw today? We saw a workbook we were going to buy down I know. today. <laughs> oh, a self help book about some magical, uh, modern magic for more, uh, modern mortals or something like that. It's a self help book. It's not that kind of thing. No. It's how God made us. This is how you're made up. And you know what? With an alive spirit, the Holy Spirit's got something to work with so that you can live a life pleasing unto God, not in your own flesh. Not one thing we've talked about here has anything to do with that body of sin. No. It has to do with that renewed mind. It's walking after the Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, would you thank you for your love and for your grace? Would you thank you that you promise to do this renewing work in us? You promise to do the work in us so we can work out our salvation with fear and our own salvation with fear and trembling because you are doing that work in us. And you promise to do that work all the way to the time you come and collect your church. The moment we call the rapture, we do thank you that, that our ability to, to live and, and to, to walk in, in the good works that you ordained us to is not based on our goodness, not based on our ability, 
put on you doing that work in us. The renewing of our mind through your word, rightly divided, and then we make a decision at that point to apply it to the situations we find ourselves in. But the the work, the heavy lifting, if, if, if you will, is done by the Holy Spirit, renewing our mind as we, day by day, as, as we study and we take the doctrine in and we think about it, and it begins to renew our mind. And then we make a decision to walk according to that renewed mind or according to that old man. And as, you, as Paul tells us over and over again, not to do. He says, he tells us time and time again, don't walk as the other Gentiles. Don't walk as the unsaved. That's not who you are. Walk in your identity in Christ. We do thank you for your love and for your grace. In your son's name, amen. 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 Let's say 710. Yeah. So let's take 15 minutes. 725. 725. Okay. Good math. We're going to turn off Facebook. We'll be back at 725. 725.